It's been a while since I've made like a video essay-esque video and I don't just want to keep on making funny haha. -ha. So I wanted to talk about one of my favorite changes a video game can undergo from version to version or installment to installment. It's not graphics, it's not new mechanics, it's not the introduction of new characters, it, it's quality of life that changes. It's quality of life changes. Well, it's, it's in the title. Well, I mean, it, it's not in the title. It, it might be in the title. I haven't come up with a title for the video of recording this, uh, but it'll probably be in the title. Quality of life changes are not talked about a lot, which is a little unfortunate. I like them a lot. But just what is a quality of life change? Well, the definition I'll give it is a change to an interface or system that makes the game easier to play. It doesn't necessarily have to make the game easier, though some can, but it makes it so you may not have to fight the game as much, which basically just means you're not subjected to a bunch of annoying stuff, like maybe super long times in the menu or whatnot. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let me try to explain with my first few examples. Recently, I've been replaying Pokemon Platinum, and as a tangent, I'm pretty surprised how well this game has held up, but after playing some more recent titles, leads a lot to be desired in terms of the quality of life department. First of all, and probably the smallest, was that there's no quick select option for Pokeballs in wild battles. Now this is absolutely minuscule and only really saves like two, maybe three button presses, but it's a nice thing to have, especially if you're going to be trying to catch a lot of Pokemon. It just streamlines the experience so you don't have to go searching through the bag menu. It also remembers the last Pokeball that you used, which is like super nice. Something that's kind of annoying about a lot of menu based games is scrolling through a bunch of text like looking for one specific item you want to find, only to realize you hit the end of the list and you overlooked it and now have to start scrolling back up. That's super annoying. If only you could sort items in your bag, that would be awesome. Well guess what? You could do that, but you can't do it in Platinum. Or at least, I don't know of a method. I'm kind of stupid so maybe there was like an option and I just ignored it or something. But anyway, with how many items you get in this game, it's super annoying to scroll through your bag, especially because most of your consumables are under the same item category. Items like repels, pokeballs, held items, sellable items, evolutionary items are all under the same category in bag storage. Once again, you get a lot of each of these, so the section of the bag gets really bloated really fast. And because item sorting isn't an option, you spend a lot of time looking through your bag just to find the right item you may want to use or sell. The ability to sort, not just by name, but also by item types, is a nice addition from later games that I thoroughly miss. Something that definitely bugged me about older Pokemon games is HMs. HMs, or Hidden Machines, are a mechanic in Pokemon that locks sections of the map behind certain milestones. Now normally, I wouldn't have a problem with this for a single player game, except for the fact that in order to use an HM, you have to teach it to one of your Pokemon as a move, and that wouldn't be so much of an issue if most of the HMs weren't terrible. And this makes it so you have to play the game in one of two ways, both not being incredibly fun. Either you have to sacrifice at least one move slot on a few of your Pokemon, or you have to sacrifice a position on your party for an HM slave. Later games have introduced other methods that serve as alternatives to HMs in the past two generations, and this is easily my favorite change in Pokemon. HMs were always super annoying because you couldn't really have the moves that you wanted. To get through Platinum's uh, Victory Road, you need Rock Smash. Rock Smash. It has 40 base power. 40! On top of that, you need 5 HMs to traverse Victory Road. Any given Pokemon can have up to 4 moves, so even if you do have an HM slave, you have to put an HM on another Pokemon that's a main member of your party. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the XP share. I don't know if this is a controversial opinion or something, but I actually like the XP share change from a held item that shares XP with one Pokemon to a key item that affects the entire party. Why? Because I hate grinding. Grinding is ass. I hate it. I did a majority of battles in Platinum, and my party was pretty on par with the levels up until the Pokemon League. I had a team of late 40 Pokemon, only to look at the Sinnoh Elite 4 and Cynthia and realize that I was like 10 levels under. I had to grind for a few hours to get my Pokemon to a level where I was able to challenge them, but this immediately halted my enjoyment of the game. I was having fun for every moment except for when I had to grind levels against level 40 Pokemon to get mine to level 50. Say what you want about later Pokemon games, but you never really have to grind in those games. Now this is a change that can be disputed as a quality of life change, so to say, as it doesn't just make the game easier to play, but makes the game easier. If it's easier to get XP, then your team becomes stronger in comparison to the enemy teams, which makes the game easier to beat. I, however, will stand by the idea that this change is a good one overall, just because it cuts out the less interesting parts of the game, and I think there are different ways to make the game more challenging in compensation to the increase of levels that just weren't taken by Game Freak. 
Because I don't want to just be talking about Pokemon and be a Pokemon shell the entire time, I want to include two other changes from games that I like. So first off, I will once again simp for Persona. Now I haven't finished Persona 4 Golden yet. I've had like a year to beat it, but you know, I've, I've been very good at it. But I've been enjoying what I have played, but I have found myself missing the lock-on system from Persona 5. So basically, if you're a Persona 5 fan, you may not know this, but in Persona 5, encounters with enemies are not random, but rather there are enemies that lurk in dungeons where you can initiate fights with depending on whether or not you attack them first in the overworld, and that will decide whether or not your party gets to act first in the actual battle. In Persona 4, you have to run up to an enemy and attack it from behind, just like in Persona 5, but the game doesn't really have a clear indicator of whether you successfully snuck up on a shadow or not. Again, this change technically makes the game easier because the game will tell you whether or not you get turn advantage when initiating battle, but the indicator is a lot nicer than trying to figure out whether or not you successfully gained advantage. On top of this, you could miss attacks, which leaves you wide open and susceptible to being initiated on, giving Shadow turn advantage. The last change I want to talk about is the removal of the life system in Mario Odyssey. In previous Mario games, if you ran out of lives on a level, you would get booted out. So if you're stuck on one specific area and messed up too many times, no matter how easily you could do the rest of the level, you gotta restart the entire thing over again. Mario Odyssey, however, does not take lives when you die on a level, but instead takes away a certain number of coins. This makes it so no matter how much you mess up on one part of a level, you can keep trying as long as you have coins left, and you get quite a lot of coins in this game. What happens when you run out of coins? I don't know, because I never have, but you'd have to die quite a bit to get to that point. What this basically does is saves the player time. It's really annoying to have to replay large parts of a level just because you can't do one specific bit. And this new system allows you to spend more time on trying something new or something challenging rather than replaying something you've already done. In conclusion, I like quality of life changes, and you probably do too. They give the player more information, allowing them to more easily act using different game systems and decreases the amount of downtime or backtracking. Now for some other changes that I would like, for Pokemon, the abilities Overgrow, Torrent, and Blaze should have some kind of visual indicators. Minecraft should have an auto-sort chest function and make it so doors right next to each other will open together. And Super Smash Bros. should have better netcode. Anyway, bye bye!